it's been a couple of days since I've had the opportunity to vlog. Um, but this weekend I kind of just chilled out, which wasn't completely my idea, but we had a crazy ice storm, like literally ice was falling from the sky and it turned this like entire area into basically an ice rink. I filmed a couple of clips so I'll insert them here. Um, but yeah, ice literally falling from the sky and I know I took one where you could see that the entire roof that you can see out of my studio window was completely ice and like you could just see like all across the street everywhere was just ice and it was insane. So we kind of just huddled down and hibernated for the weekend which was nice because I got to just chill out and kind of have a break from creating stuff constantly which you know I obviously love creating things but it's nice to have like a mental break from constantly trying to figure out what to do and everything and I find that having breaks here and there actually helps my artwork overall. I know that <laughs> it's weird because every time that I like can't create something for a prolonged period of time, it's like I just bottle everything up and then create this epic piece of artwork that I'm really happy with. So breaks are good artists, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> But yeah, other than that, I've been editing photos. I know I promised in my last vlog that I would show you some of the photos that I've been editing, so I'll insert those here. But still editing photos, again, there was like 627 that I have to go through and figure out which ones I want to take and just improve the quality of them. They're not super crazy edited, it's just make the background completely black, just fix up minor details like that and stuff. So this afternoon I'm focusing on filming a Crayola challenge for this week's video and later tonight hopefully sketching out a wood panel design, which I'm planning on being a pretty large and detailed piece of artwork so I definitely need to get started on that so that I can finish it in time for hopefully next Friday. If not, I'll have to work on something else quick and push that back. But hopefully, because, you know, I've thought of this idea and I'm like super pumped to work on it. So hopefully we can get that done today too. So I've got my Crayola swatch sheet and my Crayola pencils. And I'm going to just be picking out the colors that I need to use. I'm going to be doing a Crayola Galaxy challenge type of thing because um, my Galaxy tutorial, my pencil crayon uh, Galaxy tutorial has been doing really well and a lot of people have been asking in the comments of that video whether you can do it with Crayola pencils and so I figured the best way to answer that is to show you that it can literally be done with any type of colored pencils. So from my swatch sheet I know I want it to be in the purples and pink area so I'll be picking out colors from about there on the color scheme to probably about there. But yeah, that's one of the other good things about swatching your pencils is you can look at them and if you want to do like a chromatic type color scheme you can literally say well I want the color scheme to start here and then there and then just pick your colors in between those. So this next bit is going to seem pretty random, but last week I actually had filmed a kind of artsy time lapse of me sharpening my pencil, and then I had someone ask for a short tutorial on how I sharpen my pencils with an X-Acto knife. So that's what this is going to be. But yeah, so I guess we'll start off with the knife. This is actually like my second knife. It's kind of like the backup one. I have my newer, it's literally the same knife that I normally use for um, my paper light box cutting and any intricate 
paperwork that I do. This one is just my older one, so it's kind of more scruffed up and dirty and stuff. But the blades that I use on it, I actually use the old blades that I chip the points off of doing uh, paper cutting and stuff because when you are paper cutting extremely fine detail, you break the points off and then the blade is no good anymore. But of course, the rest of the blade is. So it's fantastic for pencil sharpening still. So I keep those blades that I chip the points off of and keep them for sharpening pencils. So I have a new pencil that I'll show you too, but see this is what they end up looking like when you sharpen them with a blade. And before I started doing this, I thought people that sharpened pencils with X-Acto knives were slightly insane. <laughs> but then you do it and you realized what you realize why people do it. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that when you do sharpen it with an X-Acto knife, you get a lot more lead, which means when you wear the lead down, you are still left with a thinner piece of lead than if you had sharpened it with a pencil sharpener, regardless of how good the pencil sharpener is. Like my Mitsubishi, whichever pencil, this one that I rave about way too often, it like this is in the most amazing pencil sharpener I've ever used and it's fantastic for colored pencils but I don't know what it is about lead pencils like drawing pencils but it just doesn't do the same thing as it does for colored pencils it might be like the width of the lead or something I'm not sure but I still will use this like I'll show you, let's start with the brand new one. So to start it off, I will actually sharpen it with this first. To have a starting point, but as you can see, like it really didn't make it that sharp. It's mainly wood still, if you look at it. To this one. So normally I would do this over a garbage can but for video purposes it's going on the Kleenex. So basically I just take my blade and you just literally start shaving it down like this. Work on the wood first and then worry about shaving up the lead. So just go, like, rotate your pencil while you sharpen it. The one that I already have sharpened, the lead is a little too long, possibly. So I'm probably not going to make this one as long in the lead area, because obviously you don't want to make the lead too exposed, because then you could snap it easier. But yeah, you don't really have to worry about keeping the wood smooth because I personally don't hold my pencils down that far. But if you were holding your pencil down at the very tip like that, you might want to make sure that you don't have any harsh edges that you could like cut yourself on or just isn't comfortable to hold. But yeah, I just take my time evening this up. And then when you have that, I literally, you just kind of shave it and this can take a pretty long time. It depends on how fine you want to make your lead. The nice thing about sharpening it with the pencil sharpener already is that you do have like a pretty fine point already that you can like work towards making the rest kind of mesh in with that. But yeah, this is literally just what you do. You just hold the pencil. Like, I'm not sure if doing it this way is going to really do anything. I just sharpen away from yourself so that there's no accidents. And I also think it just creates a better point that way because you can literally slide it right off of the edge all of the time. But yeah, you just shave it down. And that's my preferred method for sharpening a pencil. Now as for a already sharpened one, you pretty much just do the same thing except you uh, just revamp it. <laughs> so obviously yeah, 
after a while, this long lead will sometimes break off or just wear down. So as you continue, obviously you could resharpen it, but most of the time you're still left with a pretty long piece of lead. So you kind of just continue to work your way down, sharpening it like you did for the pre-sharpened, like the brand new pencil. Just you keep on chipping away the wood and then keep on fining out, thinning out the uh, lead. I guess I can also show you the finished Crayola Galaxy. This is what it looks like. I know it's kind of small, which people in this home have pointed out, <laughs> but really that's because other than I didn't really want to blow through an entire pencil in one drawing, but Colored pencil galaxies are really, can be really hard on your arm and wrist. And of course, because I'm constantly drawing and painting and everything, I'm super prone to carpal tunnel and tendinitis. And colored pencil galaxies really don't happen anymore because the last time I did one that was really big, I could not draw for a while <laughs> because I completely blew it. In fact, I'll show you <laughs> what painting that was. And this was the near-death arm experience. As you can see, it is a pretty big wood plaque, which also did not help matters, but the entire thing is colored pencil, but this, of course, entire background is galaxy. And this is actually why I developed how to draw a galaxy with colored pencils, was for this drawing. So clearly <laughs> it is a rare thing because everyone's loving the tutorial and I'm glad I got to teach you guys how to do it. But yeah, this was the drawing that made me figure out how to create galaxies with colored pencils because this was before I discovered the watercolor ground. Um, so the colored pencils were necessary on the wood. But now I actually don't do colored pencil galaxies if I can help it. I much prefer using soft pastels now. They pretty much, you can get a really similar effect and it's a lot easier on your wrist because obviously I can't afford to be out for like two weeks with a bad arm now. This was the largest and will most likely remain the largest colored pencil galaxy I have ever drawn. And we'll just put the tiny one here for comparison. Hello again, it's been a while since I last vlogged, but today hasn't really been the most productive day. My blood sugar keeps on going low, which is never fun for me or good for me. So hasn't been the most productive day, but I did manage to go to Curry's this morning, which is an art store, to pick up some things for my next artwork, so I thought I'd show you guys. So the first things are actually in this bag. They aren't super related to my next painting and I definitely should have tried to get them out of this bag before I started filming. They are just two new Winsor Newton Cotman triple zero and quad zero brushes. I plan on needing these for um, a custom Funko I'm going to make in the next week or so and my old ones are getting a little dingy, so I figured picking up a couple of new ones, especially because the curries I went to actually had them in stock, wouldn't be a bad thing. I do use them a lot in my watercolor paintings, and so you can never have too many stupidly tiny brushes. <laughs> the next stuff is all still in the bag. I need to deal with it and put it in my surface collection area, but I found these wood panels. They are 12 by 18 inches, which I figured was going to be a pretty good size for the project I'm working on. And then I also bought these thinner wood boards um, for other types of things. Obviously, I was going to try these because obviously these types of boards are a lot easier for me to store if I want to stock up on a couple to store them in my studio than the gallery style wood panel. I also want to do a trying out for the first time wood burning video on my channel. So that might be what they're used for too. But I'll pull one of these panels out. These, um, just, it's gallery style. Yeah, one and a half inches painting panel, 12 by 18. 
Um, I actually go through and check out the wood grain on all of the ones in the store because I obviously plan on having the wood exposed. If someone was doing oil painting on this or whatever, you wouldn't necessarily see the wood. So I go through and check the wood grain to make sure there's no like crazy imperfections or anything on it. But yeah, that's what those look like. The back is kind of like a canvas. It's just made out of solid wood instead. Does this actually say what kind of wood? Yeah, this one's birch plywood. The flat panels are Russian some odd wood or something. <laughs> Other art related. Um, I ordered these brushes from Amazon. I'm not sure how good they are yet, but I picked them up because they were pretty cheap. They're by Golden Maple. There was a set of small brushes, and again, like I said before, I'm planning on painting a custom Funko Pop vinyl figure, and so I was going to need some more small brushes for acrylic paint, but these ones actually say you can use them for water. Well, you can use any brush or anything. It's just certain brushes are made a certain way that will work better with certain types of paint. So there's those. Let's see. Oh yeah, also went to Canadian Tire, but this is boring. It's soldering and heat shrink wrap because I need to rewire my one van brace for my Sabine before I head to Ottawa. But I also got a new art book in the mail. It is this one. As you can see, we have the sketching from the imagination section here, and this one is the latest one that I think it just came out. I definitely just got it this week. It's sketching from the imagination dark arts. I haven't had a super long time to check it out, but I pretty much buy every single 3D Total publishing book and this one was no exception. They make some of the best art books and yeah, they're great. So yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out sometime. I know a couple of people have requested um, an art book collection video or my top art books. Would you guys be interested in seeing that? Definitely let me know in the comments and I will definitely put that up higher on the list of videos to do for this channel. And actually, I think that's where I'm going to end this week's vlog. I'm probably not going to be doing too much for the rest of the week, but if I do, I will definitely film it and put it in next week's vlog. Next week is probably mostly going to be focused on working on the wood panel art, and even maybe if I have time, working on the custom Funko Pop figure. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.